A very good morning to one and all present here. I am Mrs. Hina Rao, working as an assistant professor, School of Pharmacy, Parul University. I feel privileged to extend my greetings to respected Dr. M. N. Patel Sir, Provost, Parul University, Dr. Abhay Dharam C. Uh, Sir, Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy, Dr. G. S. Chakravarti Sir, Principal, Parul Institute of Pharmacy and Research, Dr. Lalit Lata Jha, Ma'am, Principal, School of Pharmacy, Dr. Kiruba. Florence Ma'am, Formulation Specialist in IPDO of Dr. Reddy's Laboratory, faculty members and my dear students. On behalf of Faculty of Pharmacy, Parul University, I welcome you all the distinguished dignitary to grace the online web, uh, national level webinar on respiratory doses form, characterization and IVBAB studies. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Kiruba Florence Ma'am, Ma'am has completed BPharm from Dr. MGR Medical University, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, as well as she has completed MPharm in Pharmaceutics from Dila Institute of Technology, Ranchi, Jharkhand, and PhD in Pharmacy, entailed from Maharaja Sayaji Rao Gayakwad University of Baroda, Gujarat. Ma'am has qualified GATE 1999 with IA AIR 125. To her credits, Ma'am has worked as a lecturer in Kank Manjri Univers uh, Institute of Pharmaceutical Science, Rorkela. Also has worked as a senior research associate for FND Pulmonary Department of Cadilla Healthcare Limited, Ahmedabad. Worked as a research scientist in pharma research development of Wakard Research Center, Aurangabad. Worked as a management staff in research and AMP development department of Sipla Limited, Wakroli, Mumbai. Ma'am has also worked as NPD Senior Scientist Formulation in GalaxoSmith Klein uh, Consumer Private Limited, Genome Valley, Hyderabad. Ma'am is currently working as Formulation Specialist in IPDO of Dr. Reddy's Laboratory, Hyderabad. Uh, Ma'am, you are most welcome in Parul University. Over to uh, you, Madam. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Sinharao. Uh, first of all, uh, I thank Parul University as well as Dr. Lalit Lataja for providing me this opportunity to share my experience in this particular segment of respiratory products. Uh, happy to be a lecturer once again, um, teaching or aspiring time with you all. Um, um, I'm very much privileged to present this in this forum. Uh, coming to a presentation, uh, let me uh, present my screen. Please confirm once you are able to see. Able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Yeah. Uh, the topic what I have selected is the topic where I am working for last uh, decade. That is a respiratory dosage form. So when you are knowing that respiratory system consists of starts from nasal cavity and ends with alveoli. So what are the diseases? What are the things that are happening? There are, this is a totally a different segment, totally altogether covering them in one hour time is may not be possible, but I'm mainly concentrating on the IVBAB studies, which are intended for applied on these dosage forms. So before that, a quick introduction on the global scenario of the respiratory medicines. What are the commercial products that are available? Hello, sir. 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 Hello, so if you see that one, respiratory disease of the third killer disease, apart from uh, cardiovascular as well as cancer as a prevalent one, and every year it is growing with a prevalence of 7.1 rate. It's, that means nearly 10% uh, growth always is happening in the respiratory diseases. Five major diseases are considered under the respiratory so in, by Forum of International Respiratory Society, which are pneumonia, asthma, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that is called COPD, lung cancer, and tuberculosis. When the chronic respiratory diseases are happening, that is not curable, especially in case of tuberculosis, it is curable. 
And lung cancer it can be controlled. Main thing is that when we are always having the respiratory diseases, we are always talking about the controlling the symptoms and increasing the quality of the patient's life. And further way, we are in the, we are trying to substantially reduce that comorbidity due to respiratory diseases. When considering the global disease burden, it is always considered in terms of death as well as dialysis. Dialysis has got two components. One is that uh, years lived with the disability and years of life lost. When if you see the recent uh, scenarios and the, uh, that uh, surveys and all, these dialysis are increased by 13.3% in recent century in decade. Coming to the global drug market, if you see the left hand side diagram, that 53% of the medications are intended for oral route, only 32 plus 2, 34% of the medicines are intended by, for respiratory way of administration or respiratory diseases. See example that uh, injectable and ophthalmic products, they are considered of only 5% in the market. So the entire global pharmaceutical growth market has been increased after the COVID, especially with the rate of 8.5 percentage. So the, the current scenario, the calculation is that by the year of 2027, the market value will increase to 41,000 million dollars that is the current uh, scenario what we are have the statistics we have for the upcoming year in case of that means even in that particular scenario that what is the respiratory portions when it is coming to uh, uh, what are the different dosage forms the pulmonary devices and what are the what's the proportion it is going to meant to be in the coming years even the growth rate is of, if you see the cigarette rate, it is of 6.1. And by the year of 2022, it will reach the value of $53.18 billion. It is a global uh, calculation, not for intended for any single market like US or India or whatever, maybe. It is a total global market calculations. So if you see that one, uh, out of this respiratory, especially 53%, uh, 54 percentage approximately has been considered by meter dose inhalers and rest of the things has been covered by DPIs and inhalation sectors. So mo most of the drugs like anti-asthmatics as well as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease drugs are in up applied through MDIs and DPIs and inhalations. And cough and cold products are obviously a nasal spray product. I will let you know that why MDIs and DPIs and inhalations are considered for uh, respiratory medicines, not a uh, cough and cold. Coming to nasal drug delivery system, even this is also is growing because this is also adding the value to the overall growth rate of 6.1. By the year of 2023, it will grow up to $64.2 million. If you see that one, the, the right hand, di this diagram, this is saying that the nasal route has been explored for respiratory diseases like common cold and flu as well as for neurological disorders, as well as for ex vaccination, for the pain management, as well as for different applications also. So if you see that one global market, there are so many companies, leading companies like Adamis, Arokin, and I have arranged it in the alphabetical order, but it's not like that. Um, in India from especially Sipla uh, and Sun Pharma, these are so many companies are involved. But prominently, CIPLA is the leader pioneer in the market and as of now when compared to uh, a, a global market. So coming to a treatment way, there are, we can say the one drugs intended for lower respiratory tract and drugs intended for upper respiratory tract. So the diseases which are uh, happening at the lower respiratory tract like asthma, COPD, it has been treated with the drugs like bronchodilators, like anticholinergics, short-acting beta-adrenergics, long-acting beta-adrenergics and anti-inflammatory agents like corticosteroids, leukotriens, anti-leukotriens and monoclonal antibiotics. So I have given certain um, brand names only. Uh, here we can see that entire, um, if you want to see the exact uh, molecules, we can go through any daily med or any pharmacological book, we can find out that what are the drugs are coming under each category. Even in upper respiratory, we can see that when anti-allergics because nose, up, whenever we are talking about upper respiratory, it is talking about nose, oropharyngeal, nasopharyngeal, and the till throat, we are talking about this thing. 
So anti-allergic, anti-rhinitis, and anti-inflammatory drugs are considered for upper respiratory tract. So when you see that one, if you might have seen the commercial products. So if you see that one, just I have brought a few pictures of MDIs and DPIs and nasal sprays also. You see that salbutamol is a one API that is coming as an aerosol, that is MDI, as well as also a powder, as a dry powder, salbutamol powder. So it is the main thing that when a drug is intended for lower respiratory tract, it can be manufactured, it can be formulated as a metered dosage form as well as a dry particle for inhalation. You can see the similar category of like a, a salmetrol as an aerosol as well as salmetron as a dry powder. Even thiotropium we can see as a dry powder as well as the inhalation of aerosol. So similarly, I have uh, made on this slide for all the combinations. Even here, you may find that different type of devices. You can see some are disc tape and some are with blisters, some are with a, a different, different shape. And in, in everything will be like, having... Pardon? Man, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. uh, slide, is, uh, slide is not changing, man. Only one slide is there. Just a minute. Just a minute, ma'am. I was thinking that it is. Able to see? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Previous scenes also, have you seen? No, ma'am. Oh, I'm really sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry for that one. Okay, this is the first slide and second okay, no slide. Problem, no? Second slide, I was talking about uh, this, uh, um, the market of the global mar pharmaceutical market scenario. Uh, that uh, the inhalation products of having 34 percentage in the global market, even by 2027, that is going to be a somewhere else of uh, 41,000 million dollar in the global pulmonary market. Coming to Nebulizer, Nebul this uh, MDA and DPA products, it will be of 6.1% growth rate, which is going to be $53.18 million by 2022. Uh, now, again, for the nasal products, it is going to be of $64.2 billion by 2023. And by this nasal product, has the nasal route of administration has been explored for different uh, applications like respiratory disorders, neurological vaccine, and pain management. And different market, different companies which are involved in the respiratory products and what are the different drugs are intended for respiratory products. And these are the few uh, medicines I wanted to show that are brand names which have been available in the market. Uh, ASA an example, the salbutamol which is available as a dry powder as well as also uh, this one as an aerosol. Lawrence, yeah? it is still it is not moving slides. No? No. Just a minute. I don't know what is the problem I'm raising. Yes, commercial products. Okay. Able to see this screen? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this screen? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Then I don't, I don't know when, I, when I'm projecting in the full screen mode, I'm not, I'm, it, the screen is moving to me, but uh, shall I go in this mode? Yes. Okay. And quickly we can go through previous slides also. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. That's what I'm trying to. I was the. Okay. Is it okay now? I can increase little. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You know, let me know. Otherwise, if I otherwise I will keep on going that uh, without knowing that people are in trouble. Okay. Okay, ma'am. I will keep you up. Okay. I'm really so sorry for this uh, inconvenience because I'm not that much techy. I am very much familiar with the MS Teams as well as Zoom now, but not with Google Meet. I'll try to. Okay. Uh, so as a fresh, um, we are, I'm saying that we'll start now. Uh, this one, um, respiratory diseases are uh, third major cause after uh, cardiovascular as well as cancer diseases 
and it is increasing with the prevalence of 7.1 percentage. They are not curable, but we are always trying to increase, decrease the control the symptoms and increase the patient quality life. Coming to the global market, 34 percentage of the global pharmaceutical market has been consumed by respiratory medicines. It is going to be shoot up to $41,000 million in 2027. And coming to respiratory medicine within that segment and MDAs and DPAs, it is going to be 53 percentage, 53 years, uh, 53 billion dollar by 2022. And in case of uh, nasal products, it is going to be 64.2 billion dollar by 2023. These routes are explored for treating the upper respiratory as well as lower respiratory tract. So few companies which are very pioneer in the respiratory medicines in the global market. As, as well as the, these are the few drug combination products, uh, bronchodilators like uh, long-acting beta-adrenergics, short-acting beta-adrenergics, anticholinergics, steroids, and, and anti-leucretins. These are the drugs which are predominantly used for treatment of the lower respiratory diseases. In case of upper respiratory diseases, anti-allergic antiranities as well as the anti-inflammatory drugs are used for treating the cough and cold. But coming to uh, respiratory uh, products which are commercially available in the market, if you see that one, uh, that is a uh, beta adrenergics um, agents like salbutamol, which is available as well as the MDI, as well as also available as a DPI. Similarly, so if you see that one, all the molecules are both available as an aerosol product as a MDI, as well as a DPA also. So I have collected a few more images. Uh, it may be of strip-based formulations or may, may be of small capsule or it may be of device-based. These are just few combinations we can see. There are so many things. See, in this case, there is a one capsule that has to be put inside. It has to be pricked and it has to be inhaled. So here, there is a disc which is having so many uh, drug reservoirs, which and every time when you're going for opening the one, uh, pouch will be open and the API will be coming out of that one. So similar to commercial nasal sprays, these are the mostly the nasal sprays means we are always talking about the top actuating. And the avamis is the one which is going for side actuation. So coming to what do you mean by oil dip? Oil dip means orally inhaled or nasally inhaled drug products. So there are four main categories which are going to concentrate now. One is the first one is meter dose inhalers. Meter dose inhalers, when you see that one, they are having the aluminum canisters fitted with the a pump and it has been placed inside the actuator. Then sometimes with or without actual diseases, without the spaces, they are administered and they are having the dust cap. These are the non aqueous formulations containing the propellants like uh, HFAs, hydrofluorocarbons. 143A, otherwise 2225A. These are the propellants that have been medically approved for the human use. So it has been always, it has to be actuated and the, when the medicament is coming out, the patient has to go for actively sucking or inhaling. Then coming to the another set of dosage form, this is called inhalation solution or suspension, shortly we can call this as a respule. These are the sterile dosage form. It has been always coming in tape up. This was a blow fill seal system. So whenever in the patient in the need of that one, the respool has to be cut open and it has to be emptied into the nebulizer cup. So inhalation solution and suspensions always has to be administered along with the nebulizer system and the compressors. The combination always has to be used. So when the solution, the drug suspension, or we can say that the product is emptied in the nebulizer cup, it is always mixed with air or oxygen in such a way that the product will come as a mist and the patient has to go for inhaling. It may be of active inhalation or maybe a passive inhalation. The patient may be of like small babies or a coma patient or patient who is not able to go for active inhalation by passive respiratory also it can be mixed and the patient can go for getting the medication by simple respiration. Coming to DPI, DPI is the dry powder for inhalation. That means this is the dry powder either packed in a small um, blisters or a capsules 
that has to be actively sucked by the patient. Say example, that means if a one each capsule has to be placed inside, it has to be pricked so that when the patient is going for sucking, the external air will go inside and it will fluidize the material and it will be taken inside the mouth. Then the patient is going for swallowing the mouth. By the way, that it is going for the air will be suspended through his mouth and again it will enter this pulmonary tree and it will go to the lower respiratory tract. It may be of single unit dose, like single capsules. Otherwise, the unit itself has single use disposable. Otherwise, sometimes the disc will be having so many strips of API or formulation. So each and every time, whenever we are going for actuating the device, one, one strip will remain open and it can be used by mouth. Then the third last one is that multi-dose reservoir. That means it will have a powder like say in example, 100 gram or maybe of one gram each and every time actuation then 100 mg of the medicament will come out of that one this is called multi-dose reservoir and coming to the fourth category of medications for respiratory tract is nasal sprays it may be of multi-dose or maybe of unit dose or maybe of bi-dose the commercial what we, we frequently see is of multi-dose nasal spray if you see the components, it is having a bottle fitted with a pump and it is covered by an actuator. So the pump mechanism is having the capability of going for delivering certain amount of medications at each time when it is actuated. Say example, constantly at a target weight of 50 mg or maybe of 100 mg. The target pump delivery is already designed by the pump supplier. Coming to uh, nasal sprays, nasal sprays as well as this, uh, mostly of uh, everything else of aqueous in nature, hydroalcoholic uh, hydro preparations, mostly of hydraulic in nature, um, hydro um, water based formulations. Here it may be of non meter, say, example, as like a dio bottles, when you are actuating, it will go for keep on actuating, giving the sprays. Say, example, some nasal washes. So they are non meter. Sometimes the squeeze bottles, which may be of one single squeeze, it is capable of giving only 50 microliter. So that means it is device measured. So in this case, we can use it as a nasal drops as well as you can use it as a nasal sprays. So USB chapter 115, it talks about different definitions as well as the classification of the respiratory dosage forms. As per the mode of administration, I have classified and I be the broadly it can be categorized into a different category depending upon the physical state and mode of administration. Say example, mode of administration, it may be of oral inhalation or maybe of nasal inhalation. Say example, MDIs, DPIs, as well as inhalation respues are coming under oral inhalation and the sprays are coming as a nasal inhalation. An intended site of action. Say example, this of respiratory dosage forms are either applied locally or maybe of the intention of systemic application. So the drugs which are intended for uh, allergy, rhinitis, cold and everything, it is intended for upper respiratory. For asthma, COPD, lung cancer and all it is for lower respiratory. Certain peptides like desmopressin, calcitonin and even insulin, glucagon, these are applied for a uh, true nasal route, especially for systemic effect. Certain brain targeting drugs are also available, like in the market, if you see, smartriptan, zolmitriptan are used for treating the migraine. Uh, migraine. So it's, it's in this case, the headache can be treated with one single shot of smartriptan to relieve the, the migraine pain. Depending upon the physical state, it may be of powders, it may be of direct powders or powders for reconstruction. Sometimes powders, which may not be having the stability on aqueous nature, they can be considered as the powders. Then the powders will be uh, lyophilized and the powders will be reconstituted with the water for injection or maybe of any other suitable solvent. By the time that it can be as a inhaled as well as as a respute category. And liquids may be of aqueous, especially of nasal sprays, non aqueous especially of MDIs. When it is coming to a pump delivery system, it can be of metered or maybe of non-metered. MDIs, DPIs, nasal sprays are mostly of metered. 
in case of the nasal washers we can consider as a non metered one the capsules or uh, the strip based one are pre metered and the nasal drops are considered as a device metered so again if you see that one inhalation solution and suspension or sterile dosage form which need nebulizers or along with the compression system along with the mask it has to be administered and metered dose they are the propellant based non aqueous formulation which uses a liquefied gas propellant propellant then it has to be administered as a active uh, respiratory way and dpa is also it's a powdered one the active medicament with or without a carrier um, materials like a lactose it will be mixed up and it has to be inhaled actively by the patient and nasal sprays or maybe of aqueous solution or suspensions it has to be uh, sprayed into the nostril and it has to go for uh, absorb at the upper respiratory tract another one is called inhalants inhalants is nothing but a gaseous formulation because of like menthol and all so it because of its high vapor pressure they will volatile themselves and it will pass to the uh, our respiratory dosage form so the, the, there are different broad classifications but if you pharmaceutically viable one which is available in the markets are dpis mdis inhalation solution and suspension and nasal sprays coming forth onwards we will be concentrating on the only four dosage form which are dpis mdis nasal sprays and respirators here even in regulatory requirements i have considered mostly of uh, uh, us market only because which is that is the one which is very stringent as well as it is covering most of the risk uh, product aspects of the other markets like uh, envis of brazil and uh, europe uh, guidelines as well as the australian guidelines so the as a regulatory requirement in general whenever a product is whether it is a nda new drug applications or maybe of any generic formulation like nda we need to provide we need to focus at uh, the attention on all these five aspects one is product development second one is packaging development third one is clinical study and fourth one is cmc studies cmc is nothing but chemistry manufacturing and control documentation the last one is in vitro ba be study bio availability as well as bio equivalence studies so my not much concept coming to the product development and characterization it is a simple um, it's not a simple one it is a very wide sector but still i am not concentrating much on this one product development how the composition has to be studied because if you see that one most of the formulations are iso in, in case of aqueous formulation they are isotonic as well as they will be comprising a solvents or co solvents or maybe a propellants along with the wetting agents as well as the buffers and isotonic solvents isotonic substances and when the composition is has been selected in case of nda it will be a research based a final composition in case of anda the anda generic applier supposed to give a similar q1 q2 formulation as that of the reference product you must be knowing that what is reference product that is a innovator product which is available in the market and the generic product means the second person second company or manufacturer which is intended to go for marketing the same formulation so the fda requirement is that we have to go for compiling that is same uh, composition within uh, the same to that of the reference product so the once the composition is finalized it has to be subjected for stability study at different conditions you must be knowing that one ich guidelines for different zones and different climatic conditions that the pro the desired product has to withstand all the stability conditions come into characterization studies it may be a physical characterization or maybe of chemical characterization or maybe a microbiological as well as a performance and coming to a second extended studies like dissolution and diffusion i'm not covering much but it's are the basic things uh, any formulation irrespective of oral uh, irrespective of tablets or capsules or maybe of injectables the basic studies will remain same only the acceptance criteria will differ with respect to one dosage form to other dosage form coming to the packaging development previously these all were considered as the only the formulations nowadays it has been considered as a device drug combination product nowhere it is considered as the only the product it is considered as a device drug combination product 
because these materials, the packaging materials have their own performance. This is going to be predominantly determine the efficacy of the product. So what is the control of those uh, packing material, which is part of a part of the formulation? So in, apart from that, trade dress is a, one of the uh, comparison what we are making against the reference product. And threshold analysis report, the way how we are going for operating the reference product as well as our intended trust product. These are the two documents has to be prepared. But when the device is developed, even if it is a pump of MDI or pump or actuator of a nasal spray, it has to be given with the quality. It has to follow the quality system both at the formulator site, like a generic manufacturer site, as well as the supplier site. So if you see that one, the packing materials of uh, nasal sprays and actuators, we are always getting from a few companies like uh, Akta, Nemera, MWV. These are the few pump and suppliers, uh, pump and actuator suppliers in the market. They are supposed to follow these other documents which has been listed by USFDA. That is clearly mentioned in 21 CFR 820 and ISO 1348285. So I'm not talking because that is also a different vast sector and I'm not going to talk about this thing coming to the clinical studies. Two set of studies that any generic player or ND from the filing uh, innovator has to do. One is pharmacokinetic study as well. Second one is the pharmacodynamic study. In pharmacokinetic study, obviously in a generic player, one has to subject the both reference as well as the Test formulation, it will be done on the healthy volunteers, a single dose fasting study, and the AUC and CMAX will be compared with for reference product versus test product. So 90% confidence intervals of geometric mean of AUC and CMAX has to be compared between the reference and the test product. So USFDA has a very clear cut guideline that a number of volunteers, how the studies has to be considered. And what are the exclusion criteria? What are the inclusion criteria? And how? And what is the acceptance criteria? That is 80 to 125 percentage. Coming to pharmacodynamic study, it is a placebo-controlled study, and it can be considered at different study centers. It has to be studied on patients only. So here uh, we have to enroll the patients for the different study centers, and we have to send the samples. And again, the patients will be subjected for these particular studies as like a therapeutic regimen. In case of nasal sprays and DPIs, it is a four-week study. But in case of MDIs, it is a single-dose study. The thing is that you no know, pharmacodynamic study, it includes a lot of variations, subject-to-subject -subject variations, study center variation, and the patient handling variation and all. So again, still USFDA has given the limits on how it can be done. Uh, even as a general guideline, as well as the product specific guidelines also, they have mentioned how it can be done. In case of nasal spray, the asthmatic patients, in case of patient who is having allergic rhinitis, and he will be scored for his nasal symptoms for the period of time. Whether the end, uh, at the end of the uh, last treatment period, how the scores has been improved or not, that will be considered. It is of all or more, more or less, I can say that Qualitative study, that is the reason that there are more and more variability. And more and more variability, again, the wider the limit, what the USFDA is giving the as an acceptance criteria. Coming to uh, chemistry, manufacturing control, and documentation studies. See, when the final composition is met and we, the stability study has been done and we are able to see that one, we are able to go for good uh, product. But for filing purpose, we have to make three validation batches. The validation batches can be said to be of one tenth of your commercial batches. And again, it may be of, say, example, if the commercial, if the plant is intended to go for, uh, say, example of 1000 kg as in my commercial batch, then my exhibit batch is supposed to be of one tenth, maybe of 100 kg. That will be by my exhibit batch sizes. In that exhibit batch sizes, we can see say that one, the generic applier like CIPLA or maybe of Dr. Reddy's water, maybe any company, when they are saying that they wanted to go for filing for a generic filing, they have to show three consecutive batches of manufacturing at the uh, exhibit scale level. 
and they have to show these are the validation batches, nothing but this can mimic my commercial product in the future. So once three batches, these batches called as validation batches, or maybe are called as exhibit batches, or maybe of registration batches. So any synonyms can be used. These three batches has to be manufactured. They are subjected to for all of these studies. And apart from that, they have to subject to loaded on stability. Apart from that, the third component is that IBB study. So the first set of study is that the stability study what you know that one as per the stability protocol that will be loaded and the second one is that a set of cmc study and the cmc protocol we have to do this many number of studies depending upon the dosage form say example photo stability study why we are selecting the amber bottle why we are not selecting the glass bottles of transparent in nature why we are not going for selecting the hdp bottle this all the justifications will be given based on their photostability study only. If the drug is photosensitive, we have to go with the amber glass bottles. In case of thermal cycling, again, during the transportation, there's some the when say this can go to US market where it is a full temperature, we are in tropical region. By the time that when it will transport from here from 30 degrees Celsius is an average temperature where US will be having a temperature of 15 and what will be the, uh, the fate of the product, whether it will be having particular stability or not. So that will be given by a thermal cycling study. That means the product will be subjected to minus 20, minus, minus 22, minus 10 degrees Celsius for 12 hours, followed by it will be treated to room condition up to 40 degrees Celsius. This cycles will be subjected for three to four cycles for 28 days. And after that, the stability, the chemical stability of the product will be assessed. And coming to the resting time, see example, when we are using the product for some time, uh, the pace at which I'm going, whether you are able to follow, in that case, shall I slow down or shall I uh, go in the same speed? Uh, you know, or anybody can confirm? Yes, ma'am. No, I mean, this period is okay in which I'm uh, talking about. Uh, yes, ma'am. It is okay. Because I find it so Because I think it's an interactive session, but I'm presenting my slides and uh, I will come to our last question in the action section. Then only we can have because I don't want to lose my flow. That's the reason that yes, I'm it is totally okay. Please continue. Okay. So coming to the resting time, when the patient may not be using the product for a long time, maybe intermittently he will leave it for some time. So how long the product are allowed to set to be okay, even if it is kept for 10 days, 15 days without use. And even if you're coming to a dosing orientation, cleaning instruction, because every time it is in contact with the patient, people are always using their nose or nosotrial as well as in the mouth, how effectively it has to be cleaned or not cleaned. So these are the instructions, these are the studies has to be considered for this way. So priming and repriming, I will let you know that what you mean by that one and tail off. Each and every bottle you might have seen that it is for 120 sprays or 60 sprays, even in MBAs and DPIs and as well as in case of uh, nasal sprays also. So tail off is nothing but how many number of sprays even after that label climbing is happening. So in case of, again, in case of this varying of uh, flow rates, when a patient is actively uh, has to inhale, like MDIs, even in uh, inhalation of respirators, the patient is may or may not be capable of going for respirator, doing the respiration cycle completely. Sometimes that flow rate may be of 30 uh, liter per second per minute, or maybe of 60 liter per minute, or maybe of 90 milliliter per minute. In that case, the study also has to be established at what, uh, whether the uh, test product as well as the reference product will be able to have a similar delivery of a drug delivery when uh, the patient is uh, respiring in the different flow rate. And device robustness, when the patient can make the product to fall down, it may be a shaking or maybe a dripping, falling, falling from the height of three meter or three feet or maybe of 10 feet. So device has to be worked robustly during the uh, different treatment. 
and transpose simulation study. And these all the studies are somewhere else, more or less intermittent, intermittently exchanged for device robustness as well as the thermocycling study. It all are having an indent with a one single indent that even if the product along with the device has been subjected to different adverse conditions, still they are able to deliver the drug properly. That is the one objective of this particular, all the CMC studies. So in vitro dose proportionality is applicable to uh, different dosage, form. the dosage form which is coming in the different pack sizes or different uh, strengths. Say example, budesonide, uh, which is coming in the 1 mg pack as well as 0.25 mg pack. So in the two uh, in the two ml content. So what is the dose proportionality is explained. So 1 mg is able to deliver 800 microgram means 0.25 mg is able to give the same proportion or not. That is the in vitro dose proportionality. Say example in a, another example, another uh, study is that MDIs with the spaces. What is the use of the spaces? Because when we are going for actual Waiting the MDIs, for example, this, this slide. I'm coming to this slide. One second. When the API has been, when the, the canister is actuated, the drug will come out simultaneously. At the same point of, point of time, the patient has to contain all the medicament in his mouth without fail. Otherwise, through any gap in the mouth, it will go out of the system and it will not be go into the, uh, the site of action. In that case, spaces are used. Or that means once the medication is a uh, canister is actuated, the medicament will come into the spacer at that time. The, the patient may or may not be actively going for inspiring the inhaling that particular disease. That means the medicines which will be remain in the spacer for some time until the patient is going for the rest, uh, the, the next active inhalation. So that means this kind of spaces are nothing but a void space which is allowing the drug to expand at that particular period and that particular area for a certain period of time. After that, within two seconds or fraction of a second, the patient will go for actually uh, inhaling. In coming to a drug, some in that case, how much amount of the drug has been deposited in the mouthpiece? That is has to be measured whether it is going as a waste or or something that has to be uh, analyzed and what is the delay is happening with respect to MDIs. These are the two things are especially monitored with respect of MDIs. So coming to uh, that in vitro BAB studies. So in vitro BAB studies is nothing but uh, a set of combination of six to seven uh, studies which has to be applicable to all the uh, dosage form along with the reference as well as the test product then they are statistically compared whether one product is equivalent to other product or not. So what are the parameters are? What are the studies are compared? What are the attributes are considered as the in vitro BAB studies? One is single actuation content. Actuation. So this is not applicable to inhalation because this is a solution which is going through as a mist. But in case of one actuation for nasal spray, one actuation of MDIs and one actuation of DPIs, it will be considered single actuation content and second one second study is that aerodynamic particle size distribution and third study is droplet size distribution and fourth one is spray pattern plume geometry priming repriming and the microscopy studies so coming to inhalation this is very limited number of studies only that aerodynamic particle size distribution as well as droplet size distribution these are the two studies are there but apart from that, mean delivered dose, that is a synonym of single actuation content, which has been applied to inhalation solution and suspension. That is called one, what is if your respule is said to be of having two ml of the formulation containing one mg of the medicament, that is called unit dose content. That is a synonym of single actuation content. Another one is called as mean nebulization time. Mean nebulization time means when the two ml of the drug product is emptied in the nebulization cup, and it is administered with a compressor, how much time duration is taking for emptying the entire cup? Maybe of two minutes or maybe of three minutes or maybe of five minutes. That is called mean time. 
So in coming to the rest of the studies, like uh, aerodynamic particle size distribution, droplet size, spray pattern, bloom geometry, these are the things we will elaborately see for nasal sprays and DPIs, uh, sorry, nasal sprays and MDIs in the forthcoming session. Coming to single actuation content. So when we are saying that one, if you see the any leaflet of any uh, nasal sprays, if you see that one, shake the bottle gently because if it is in case of a suspension, if it is not a suspension, Function, then there is no doubt need of shaking. Remove the dust cap and we can go for actuating for some time. So, what's the need for actuating for some time to get the spray? So, initially, I told that this is compressing this nasal sprays or compressing of the pump or actuators along with the dip tube. When the solution is filled, for say, example, of three fourth of the bottle is filled, when you are keeping the pump inside the liquid will rise up to the level which is external similar to that of the external meniscus so the due to the uh, capillary rising after that this entire portion will remain empty so in that case the air in this particular place has to be displaced by actuation of for some time the number of actuation required to go for displacing that particular air is called as priming okay so say example, dimestrite is having six times. Six times it has to be go for actuating. After that, it will give the target delivery. Say example, each example, each pump will have a fixed volume of delivery. Say example, 100 mg or maybe of 140 mg or maybe of uh, 50 mg. So dimester pump is having the capability of going for delivering 140 mg after six times of actuating. So the number of priming should be similar to that of RLD versus RLD, the reference product versus test product. Repriming, what do you mean by repriming? When the bottle is not actuated for some time, say example of 14 days or maybe of 28 days. So we are keeping the bottle aside due to some time gravitational force, the liquid in the dip tube will fall down. It will come down and it will come to the near to the equal to the level of the meniscus, which is outside the bottle. Then again, the patient has to go for refilling the chamber. That is called repriming. That means the again number of sprays has to be actuated after leaving period of certain amount of time. So single actuation content means when we are going for collecting a single spray, like 100 mg or whatever may be the targeted pump delivery, that will be analyzed for drug content and the drug content will be compared with the reference product as well as the test product. So in case of uh, in case of a liquid product, hydro, uh, hydro um, water-based formulation, collecting 100 mg product inside the uh, conical flask or maybe of a volumetric flask is easy because it will not expand. It will be as a spray. It will be collected as the inside the uh, conical flask. But in case of this one MDAs, it will go for expanding because the propellants, when it is coming out of the uh, narrow orifice, it will be expanded like anything. Then it will become a very, uh, it will get volatile and it will be going for mixing with the atmospheric air. In order to collect those uh, medicament along with the propellant, it is going for in the containment way that is used for DUSA. DUSA is a one apparatus called dos dosage unit sampling apparatus. It's something like a uh, similar to that of the uh, spacers. So when you're actuating that uh, the medicament will be expanded in this one and the propellants will go out and the medicament will be filled, get uh, sticked into the filters and the filters will be later on collected and it will go on for washed for their chemical content, washed and analyzed for their chemical content. Coming to aerodynamic particle size um, uh, distribution. Otherwise we can say that drug in small particles. Impact as when the drug is passing through the, um, the trachea as well as the oropharyngeal route, it is passing through a narrow tubes and it will be get heated by the walls and the sides of the, the branchial tree and it will get deposited. So if you see that one, US, uh, USP is having a separate classification of the different uh, respiratory region with different sizes. Similarly, it can be mechanically uh, simulated as the impactors. So the impactors are having a different box like structure. I can show you like here. You see that one different stages, different plates are arranged and different plates are having different sizes of diameters 
through which the when the particle is passing through and it will get deposited say example in case of nasal spray it is a there is a possibility of getting the sprays are going out so there is a expansion chamber but in case of uh, mdis we have the spaces say example when the sample is passing through this one it will get uh, impacted by the walls of the impactors and it will get deposited and you can see that one in case of dpi more amount of the particles of bigger sizes will be placed on the first plate when keep on going towards the downward size the smaller particles will pass through a different different uh, orifices and will get deposited in different areas it totally mimics the the total inner uh, our trachea region similarly when the residues are passing through it is a uh, vertical the previous one what you have seen is the vertical one and this is called the uh, horizontal one this one this is called next generation impactors if you see the one we can see that one fine droplets has deposited in the different stages one so what do you mean by that finally what you are collecting in that one what is the observations you are making out of this one see how much fraction is getting deposited at the lower respiratory that is called fine particle fraction so if you see that one in this case the each and every stages of reference that amount of drug deposited by the reference product will be compared against the amount of drug deposited by reference product that is the comparison what we are making and the fraction the fine fraction uh, particles uh, that how much it is the sum of all the things especially of stage 3 to stage 7 will be compared with both the formulations another one called us as the aerodynamic mean mass median aerodynamic diameter it is a one of the diameter say example this is the diameter 1.2 is equal to 1.1 to 2.1 this is the diameter anticipated diameter of aerodynamic it is one of the diameter equivalent to that of your circular equivalent diameter surface equivalent diameter similarly what will be the supposed to be a diameter of the formulation or a particle when it is suspended in the air this is also compared with the another particle say example how it has been analyzed see it is a ngi next generation impactor along with the spaces when the mask and the compressor systems or maybe of the respuse it has been activated 10 sprays are collected and open, after that it will be open and each plates will be washed for washed and collected and it will be analyzed for drug content coming to drug distribution a drug droplet site the distribution when the light is passing through a droplet it will get scattered depending upon their size if it is a bigger particle and it will be the scattering angle will be low if it is a smaller particle it will be scattered on the uh, very in a very diversified way so it is a mere theory of light scattering when the nasal spray is forming it is having different stages like initially it is becoming a distorted pencil then it is becoming an onion and tulip and fully developed space so your cvd is always directing as you have to analyze the spray when it is in the completely developed space develops region so there is a three phase it is a initial formation phase fully developed phase and the final is a dissipation phase and when the spray is becoming a completely developed phase it will be giving a 10 to 15 microseconds will be of a flatter region in that region that has to be analyzed say example when the spray is coming as a stream okay the spray will go for it will become as a liquid sheet first because of the it is the passage through an aura orifice it is becoming more and more surface free energy and by the way that will become a smaller droplets when the droplets are coming out the droplets has to be measured by a laser beam or laser structure at a particular distance either at the uh, from the nostril to this distance maybe of within 10 cm it has to be analyzed so there is an instrument called spray tech that spray tech is having the laser source another one is the transmitter module in between that one the nasal spray will be actuated when the spray will be coming out it will be bombarded by the laser sprays and the laser so in the droplets and it will be received by the transmitter module because of the algorithms it will go for calculating d10 d50 d90 and one is a homogeneity index value that is called span span is nothing but d90 minus d10 divided by d50 
and the percentage volume lesser than 10 micron so these are the attributes will be uh, will be uh, will be uh, displayed uh, it will be recorded by the instrument after that we will be going for statistically comparing d50 and span of the reference product against d50 span of a test product coming to the another test spray pattern and plume geometry when the spray is coming it may be a very narrow spray it may be of wide fine spray or the, the cone which is producing a cone but it is a spray in the middle it may be of empty or it may be a spray of flat or it may be a full cone in most of the cases in MDIs as well as the nasal spray we anticipate we expect that to be a true fully developed cone spray what we are anticipating but it may have a different angle say example this spray is a moderate in um, wider this is a very narrow one this is a very wider one so different cones that means the cones will have a different geometry and it has to be compared the reference product has to be compared with the 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 test product say example if there is one more instrument called spray view this is also a laser based instrument when the laser plane is coming it's a not a one single ray it is a laser plane when it is coming and it is cutting the uh, the spray in the transverse direction a cone when it has been cut into the transverse direction it gives the circular pattern in the circular pattern it has to be what is the diameter of the particular circular will be compared against different formulations say example the cone has been considered for 60 centimeters 60 says 60, 60 meter 60 mm of the the entire cone will be cut into two different distances 30 and 60 so this distances are not fixed but in the instrument we can fix the analytical tip point so that we can go for actuating so in case of uh, nasal spray it will be the laser beam will pass through in the transverse manner in case of MDI it will be passed through in the vertical manner and finally you will see that one what are the things you are going to see in this one this is the actual instrument spray view and what are the things we are going to study the maximum diameter minimum diameter and the ovality ratio ovality ratio is nothing but the ratio of maximum diameter to minimum diameter and the perimeter and what is the area of the next uh, so this is a spray in which way the spray is occurring say example it will occur within the 200 milliseconds or maybe of 150 milliseconds so all the images will be arranged frame one above each other then that what is the maximum diameter minimum diameter and all these values are calculated the, all the things are algorithms are made within the instrument and finally you will get the numerical values only so what are the values i have what are the attributes i have highlighted as in a bold on italy they are you considered for statistical analysis and coming to plume geometry again here the play it is with respect to the spray the device will be visualized in the in a parallel way how the sprays are happening See, when the spray is happening it is at the entire angle it is considered as the cone so what is the cone angle that is the entire angle if there is a center line what is the left angle what is the right angle that is the arm what is the total degrees and again what is the what is the diameter of the base of the cone if the diameter of the circular of the bottom of this cone of 60 mm is always a complementary to the diameter of the uh, circular which has been produced by the spray pattern studies in coming to mdi this is also visualized in the lateral view but mdis we can we cannot find it as a very cone it will be always a mist as a wider uncontrolled mist but the cone will be set inside within the 30 percent of the intensity what are the parameters or attributes are studied in this one say example here we are considering that plume angle plume width and plume height this study is a characteristic study and it is not considered for any population bioequivalent study say example see this spray is also happening here the average will not be taken 
the point, the time point at which the maximum intensity is taken, the photo will be taken at the time point only, we'll go in for considering the study. So many times we are going to see that one, how this uh, nasal spray or MDS will be actuated. Because within the instrument, within the uh, human population, there will be much more variation in the one. The child can actuate with the, say example of 4 kg of force and uh, the older patient people can actuate in the 5 kg and adult can go for actuating the 8 kg of the force. But USFDA is always asking us to go for actuating the system within the uh, constant way. So there are so many auto actuation systems are available. This is for top, this is for side actuation of bottles, this is for the squeeze bottles. In case of MTIs, because of the propellant, it has to be shake and fire uh, each and every time. So that are called, uh, this type of actuators are available. Coming to a last one, that one characterization study is said to be of morphology driven Roman spectroscopy. So what is that instrument called? What is the main application of this one? This is a simple microscopy only, but it has a, instead of light beam, it has the morphology. This one is having the Roman spectroscopy. Say example, this product is containing a medicament of say one insoluble API along with an insoluble excipient. This microscopy will keep on recording all the particles which are of API as well as the excipient. Then it is having a capability of going for identifying the API itself, the particle of API, and it can distinguish from the excipient because of the Raman spectroscopy. So when that means if you are placing the samples in the microscopic slide, it will go for selecting, it will go for automatically recording all the particles and finally, it will go for chemically identifying the components from the rest of the system and it will give the, the number distribution as well as the volume distribution data. So come, that means apart from that distribution data, it will give the, um, the chemical, it, the main application part is that chemical identity as well as it is it can capture as well as store the uh, thousands of images of individual particle. And it will give the uh, details about the what is the circular equivalent diameter, either in terms of number equivalent, number distribution or maybe of in the uh, volume distribution, aspect ratio, elongation, and what is the solidity and the convexity. For this one, uh, whenever we are going for measuring any analysis of any samples, we need to create a dictionary or a directory within the system itself. Say example, if the formulation is having five insoluble ingredients along with the two APIs. All the five ingredients are to be analyzed first as separately. Then this instrument will take it up in their memory and it will go for capturing that it will keep it in their database as a library. Later on, when we are placing the formulation under formulation under the slide, it will go for capturing all the particles and it will distinguish the three excipients as well as the two APIs and it will categorize it and it will give the final data on this one. So FDA has recommended this one. This is a very uh, authentic as well as very precise techniques. So in that case, FDA has given is a substitute for clinical endpoint study. Instead of pharmacodynamic study, people can go for utilizing this one. We can establish this data uh, like a number distribution. That means it is a basic that when the formulation is having a similar uh, same number distribution or the particle size of the reference product will have similar dissolution rate and it will have a similar therapeutic effect. That is a consideration has been given for this particular study and it is a substitute as a uh, clinical endpoint study. So in that case, I'm concerned that uh, the, here itself, I'm closing this one. So there are a few characterization studies which are considered as for the bioequivalence studies, even though I have rushed up. See, you see that one, single actuation content, aerodynamic particle size distribution, droplet size distribution, a spray pattern, plume geometry, and priming and repriming along with the microscopic studies are considered as essential tools or a characterization studies for comparing a generic product against the reference product we are subjecting them into the statistical calculations like population bioequivalence. Then we are saving that the, pop, the product, the reference product 
as well as the test product are not differing significantly and we are matching the product in that way we are going for filing or for any product for the filing with the usfda so later on usfda review all the data and everything and they come back and they give the approval for commercial product launch and everything so any questions with that i conclude my presentation is there any questions let me know so they're open to the team but still i have exceeded time i'm really sorry that one initial reputations has taken a time so that's it from my side uh, thank you so much ma'am it was a very informative and fruitful session if any participant has any question regarding this can ask or write down in the chat box uh good morning madam yeah good morning ivey good morning madam madam i am dr vivek uh, i am working as associate professor over here and uh, madam it was it was a very nice presentation uh, very comprehensively uh, told about the studies madam but i have one question in my mind is that uh, whenever we are going for nasal delivery the patient condition is always affecting the drug delivery like for example if he is having uh, sneezing or common cold then this will affect the absorption of the drug so is there any test in the usfda uh, or in the fda uh, that uh, we can assess this uh, that how this condition is going to affect the absorption of the drug from the nasal route uh, most of the time um, uh, because when we are talking about industry as well as this one this nasal sprays we are always uh, this characterization studies or can this considered as well as characterized in the standard set of conditions the standard set of conditions means we are expecting that the ciliary movements and the drug absorption rate or not modified the, the the cell line what we are studying the membranes what we are studying during the diffusion studies as a dissolution study it has been kept as a constant so fda has not at given any indication that whether the drug absorption is getting varied because of the patient condition or not they have not given a consideration ivp study as well as the characterization studies are always considered or to be carried out in the standard condition so there are papers there are things we can consider we can evaluate we can evaluate whether the drug absorption can be varied because of the uh, disease condition say example if the patient is having allergy obviously the ciliary movements will be more and more the drug clearance rate will be more and more isn't it so in that case right. again the drug absorption the drug presentation the mean residence time of the drug at the site of administration may not be the same as to that of the normal volunteer isn't it so that is happening that is true but us fda has not given any uh, indications or conditions how it will be in the varied or altered condition of the patient we are industry as industry we are always analyzing the samples comparing the samples at the standard set of conditions frankly speaking we don't because have as you said that uh, drugs are available for allergic manitis initially you told one slide pardon vivek i couldn't you get you told that uh, drugs are available for allergic rhinitis yes can you hear me mrd yes initially yeah. there are certain formulations available for allergic rhinitis also yes to, which are delivered through nasal route so if you uh, see the condition like in allergic rhinitis always we have a cold situation we are having sneezing and all those sort of things so how come the uh, delivery system will be effective under these conditions it becomes a question about the thing see example in case of allergic rhinitis there are drugs like azelastin oxymetazole and xylometazole and anticholinergics are available so they are the mast cell stabilizers they are going for inhibiting the histamine release by the way they are going for subsiding the allergic reactions say example uh, how effective these medicines are you see that one i can say that one oxymetazole which starts working within 30 minutes that means uh, for example how fast the medicament is done see even though the local site of administration is having more and more mucus and it is getting diluted because it is because of the dripping in the forward side as well as in the backward front backward front and this because of the the mucus nature it may not allow the drug to reside in the site of administration for long time 
but how fast that you can get the drug is efficient to work on this drug for example oxymetazoline is more effective than i can say as last week in comparison so in that case because the onset of action the rate of penetration is okay that makes a difference which product will act very fast the onset of action that is the one thing that will determine okay thank you very much yes madam i am bhavisha patel from school of pharmacy uh, madam i have one question regarding the herbal medicines used in a respiratory uh, respiratory diseases so yes. what are the regulatory policies for these herbs which are used for respiratory diseases in case of pharmaco this drugs which are coming from herbal medicines uh, as of a, you know that pharmacocognacy it has to be standardized that is one thing even if you see that one no so many products are coming with the natural uh, natural origin like uh, aloe vera smooth uh, that nasal washes with the aloe vera as well as glycerin from natural source and even um, there are product there are the proprietary product but not approved by usfda so if you see that one usfda is much more reluctant to go for approving this type of uh, herbal based product for uh nas respiratory uh, applications especially for they are more cautious about for lower respiratory uh, because lower respiratory whatever the medicines which are less than 5 micron which reaches the systemic circulation directly so i couldn't find any uh, lower respiratory medicines with natural medicines for upper respiratory there are products are available but not approved by usfda Okay, so nowadays for respiratory disease, some herbal medicines are also available in the market. So we can rely on that or not? No, we are relying on them because of our uh, regular day-to-day -day use. See, some people are still using that haldi, uh, that uh, turmeric-based inhalation. This is in the turmeric or uh, pepper. Uh, we are uh, taking the decoctions and those things. Again, India is made up of uh, India is having the cultural uh, a good combination of. ayurvedic medicines as well as plant based medicines so uh, based on our experience our traditions we are following this nowadays they are started adopting this particular uh, medicines but fda is totally reluctant on this one for them everything for fda everything has to be quantified and you have to know what and it has to be a reproducible again we know that as a uh, subject of pharmacocognacy we know that one what is the reproducibility reproducibility of the active constituents in the uh, upcoming uh, supplies of uh, throughout the year or throughout the entire batches and everything in that way we may not until unless those herbal medicines are not standardized as per the fda's requirements it will not enter the uh, fda's um, marketed approved products list Okay thank you ma'am thank you Okay any other questions Okay ma'am um, as a token of appreciation ma'am i would like to felicitate you with e certificate on the behalf of parol university so i am sharing the my screen Okay. Uh, my screen is visible to you, ma'am. Yes, sir, Miss. Uh, please accept it, madam. Just a minute. Thank you. Okay. All the participants can uh, uh, found feedback form link in the chat box, and all of you need to fill it. You will get the certificate. Again, ma'am, it was a very informative and fruitful session. Thank you so much, and thanks to everyone present here. Thank you, guys, and especially if you want to reach out to me in person, we also my full name at gmail dot com. You can connect me for any queries, anything. I know that I have rushed. It's a very wide chapter, wide, big segment, and I cannot complete it within a uh, 
hour and again we can connect it to now and then whenever you feel like are talking on this aspect thank you so much for i especially once again thank you parul university as well as dr lalit lataja as well as all the coordinators for arranging this session thank you so much Thank you, thank you, Florence. Thank you. Please visit Baroda and Parul University also. Sure, I'll try. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.